Johnny Dollar. At McCracken, Johnny, Universal Adjustment Bureau. Well, dear Santa Claus. Huh? All I want for Christmas is a million bucks, a new convertible, a bevy of beautiful <laughs> blondes, two redheads. I'm glad you're talking to Santa Claus instead of me. What's your problem, Pat? Plain old-fashioned greed. Greed? Plus a no-good Samaritan. Want to go to work on it? I, uh, what's the fee look like on this one? I can always use a few extra bucks this time of year. As who can, but you know something? What's that? When you find out what this is all about, Johnny, well, believe it or not, even you may suddenly decide to make like one of Santa's helpers. Oh, now, wait a minute. If that means no fee... Come on over. Let's talk about it, huh? Yeah, I think I'd better. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the sudden wealth matter. Pat McCracken trying to chisel me out of a fee? Well, there was one way to find out. Expense account item one, a dollar even for a cab to his office. On second thought, just in case, let's call it a buck and a half. When I got there, Pat got straight to uh, the Johnny, point. Johnny, as you know, we adjust insurance claims, do a lot of other services for a lot of small companies. So? Well, a good many of them cater to the farming communities. Not only home and property insurance, but they push endowment, the retirement type of policies. Companies like, uh, oh, Amalgamated Life, Trinity Mutual, New Britain Mutual, and so on. Uh-huh. I think I've worked for all of them. Well, then you know the sort of clientele they cater to. So what's happened? Uh, two years ago, out in South Dakota, in a big South agricultural Dakota. area... Just a few days before Christmas? Wow. Now, listen, Pat, listen, I... Listen, huh? We suddenly got noticed that a lot of people in the town near Sioux Falls were cashing in their insurance. Well? Well, then, a little over a year ago, the same thing happened in a farming section near Fayetteville, Tennessee. And about six months ago, at a small town near Macon, Georgia. And these people are not only cashing in their policies, but they were borrowing on their land, hawking their furniture, raising cash any way they possibly could. For what purpose? To invest in the stock market. Oh, well, maybe you can't blame them. Johnny. I own a few shares myself, some at and sure, sure. GE, some Union Carbide. Yeah, but you buy those blue chips and through a legitimate broker. <sighs> well, doesn't everybody? Not these people. They were handing their dough over to some guy who moved into town and promised to double any money they gave him inside of three weeks. Oh, oh no. That old racket? That old racket. They'd give him a hundred bucks to invest for them, and three weeks later he'd return them two hundred? Yes. And when the word got around, everybody in town would start handing him his life savings. Yes. And out of the money coming in, he'd pay off the early summers. Oh, pay them oh. two for one. So they and all the rest of the pigeons would keep handing him more and more. And then, of course... Oh, sure, sure. As soon as he got a really big bundle in his hands, he'd disappear. Exactly. Oh, brother. One of the oldest, dirtiest, meanest rackets in the world. And the poor, greedy people are still falling for it and getting burned. And the authorities haven't been able to catch up with this guy. By the time they have, he's been gone. But now the latest series of policy cancellations started coming in only a few weeks ago huh? from a town called Enterprise, New Jersey. Well, then, Pat, there may be time to nab it. I hope so. But why aren't the local authorities doing something about well, it? Well, the man is still paying off, Johnny. You know, the early investors. You can't nab him for that. Oh, well, what he's really doing, though, is setting up the later suckers for a big killing. Of course. But isn't anybody wise to what he's up to? Who knows? Maybe there are a few who are smart enough to get in at the beginning during the big buildup. Yeah, but they'll get their money back. Why, sure, doubled. But then, when he gets enough new money... Well, aren't the police wise to him? Suppose they are, Johnny. What can they do so long as he keeps paying off as promised? Oh, brother. Of all the dirty rot. Well, you want to go look? I sure do, Pat. And you can pay my expense account, but that's all. You know, uh, on account of Christmas or something. I kind of thought you'd feel that way about it. Yeah. I'll be in touch. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha, 
And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Sudden Wealth Matter. Expense account item two, sixty-two fifty, And it includes a plane to Philadelphia. And there, in the city of brotherly love, a $50 deposit on a rental car. I drove south on 47 into the farm country, through Vineland, then Millville, and finally to the little town of Enterprise. It had a main street a few blocks long that looked a bit run down at the seams. There was a food, clothing, and a variety store, a drugstore, a movie, and a couple of gas stations. There was a railroad station for shipping out the farm produce, but the lot around it was overgrown with weeds. A block east of the station was the, uh, well, it was an old, somewhat nondescript sort of building, but over the front door was a weathered wooden sign that told the world it was the city hall. Inside, at the end of a corridor, I found a door that bore the legend Police Headquarters. Police Headquarters? That's right, son. I'm the chief of police, Chief Walters. Uh, what'd you say your name is? Well, I didn't, but it's Johnny Dollar. Well, pull up a chair and sit, Mr. Dollar. Okay, thanks. Here. Now, what can I do for you? Chief Walters, I'm an insurance investigator. Huh? Oh, sure, Johnny. Sure, I know all about you. I hear all about them cases you investigate on the radio. Yeah, I catch it on WCAU in Philadelphia. Good. Well, now, listen, I... Only, uh, say, I, I, I hope you didn't bother coming down here just on account of I took some cash out of my policy. You did? Well, tell you the truth, Johnny, a lot of people did. Oh, you know how it is. Something special comes along, you can use some extra cash. Oh, but now, don't you give it a second thought. Oh, why do you say that? Well, a few more weeks from now, the folks in this town will be buying up more insurance than ever. They'll be buying more of everything. Uh Uh-huh. You mind telling me why? Well, because we'll all have a lot more money, that's why. In spite of what Mr. Lowry says. Oh, it's Mr. Lowry. Oh, he runs that piddling paper. You know the Gazette. Uh, what he says about what, Chief? Well, now, I'll tell you this, Johnny. He puts any of them things that he says about Mr. Morgan in his paper, the folks won't buy it anymore. Morgan? John D. Morgan. Yeah, he's the man that's putting this town on his feet again. Now that the farmer's dropped off. John D. Morgan. One of his grandpappy's relatives on his mother's side was a rocky feller, and another one was a Morgan. Big financiers, just like he is. Uh-huh. Yeah, see, he belongs to that New York Stock Exchange. He told you that? That he did, son. Well, then I have a sneaking suspicion he's the man I came down here to see. I, I would. I would if I was you. Why, Johnny, when he come here, Jerry Chisholm gave him $20 to invest for him. Three weeks, and he give Jerry back 40 Yeah, I've heard about this. And then the widow Pasquale gave him 25 So, uh, three weeks later, he gave her 50 back. Y- yes, sir. So now she's going to dig up some more to invest. Well, just like everybody else in town, including me. Uh-huh. Has he told you why he's being so good to you folks? Yeah, sure has. And it's a mighty fine thing. Why? Well, because it was right here that one of his ancestors got his start. His name was Jodiah Morgan. Jodiah Morgan? Yes, sir. Back in 18... Oh, 1800 something. I see. So he's come here to show his gratitude for the town that gave his family a start. That's what. Oh, yeah. So, Johnny... You just invest everything you can with him, and you'll be glad you did. Uh, where'll I find this John D. Morgan? Uh, over at the Parker house. Well, Johnny, he made old man Parker turn the whole third floor into a suit for him and keep the hotel safe up there to keep our money in. Yeah, and you know what he spends for that suit of rooms? No. $100 every week? Wow. Yeah. Okay, Chief, thanks very much. Oh, uh, of course, uh, you being from out of town, though... Well, uh... Are you on pretty good terms with him? Oh, sure am. Well, I probably sent him more folks with their money than anybody. Oh, well, then uh, maybe you can do me a favor, then. Well, sure, Johnny, sure. Anything you say? Uh, well, look, Chief, uh, call him up. Tell him you'll send me over. Tell him I'm, uh, you know, one of the hometown boys who made good in, uh, well, in, in selling on the road and that I've come back here for the holiday. Yes. All right, all right. Now, now, I'm sure he'll let you in. Yeah, just like he tells us, Johnny... The more money he can get a hold of, the more he can make for all of us. Oh, sure, sure. Only, uh, uh, well, why is it you you don't want him to know what you really do? Well, uh, you know, personal reasons, and uh, he might think I don't need the extra money. Ah, uh-huh. okay, Johnny, anything you say. Yeah, good. Uh, meantime, I'll call on Mr. Lowry at the Gazette. Yes, well, now, don't you believe him, Johnny. That suspicious old crackpot don't know what he's talking about. All he is trying to do is to make up a lot of scandal for that lousy paper he is. Yeah? Yes, sir. We'll see. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. 
And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. I've tried to pound some sense into their heads, Mr. Dollar, but they won't listen to me. If I print something about that shyster in my paper, they won't buy it. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. All they do is keep handing over more of their hard-earned money to them. Oh, sure, but they're getting it back, aren't they, Mr. Lowry, plus a handsome profit? Sure they are, those who gave him money over three weeks ago. So what do they do then? They go out and beg and borrow some more and give that to them. You can't, you just can't raise it. So he keeps taking in more than he's paying out? Ten times as much, every day. But as soon as he's got hold of every cent these people can cough up for him. Well, you know. Oh, yeah, Oh, if only I could get some action around here. Get him locked up in jail. Yeah, but how can you as long as he's paying out on the original investments? Yeah. You have no case against him. I know. Well, he'd sue for false arrest and have you over a barrel. Of course. Oh, the suckers would rally to his side and you couldn't prove a thing on him. I know. You simply can't touch him, Mr. Lowry, until he makes a break for it. Yes, but who knows when he'll try it. If he's clever enough to do what he's doing, and with the stupid one-man police force in hey, this minute, town... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes? There's one way of knowing when he'll try to duck out of here. How? By giving him the necessary encouragement. Well, the only encouragement you could give to a man like him would be in the form of money. That's right. Now, look, I got a plan, Mr. Lowry. It'll take your complete cooperation. Yeah. And it may take the use of some of your money. My money? It's a chance, but the one chance we have. Now, now that's carrying things a little too far. Hey, look. Back. Are you on my side or his? Well, well you know the answer to okay. that. Okay. But... Then our job right now is to convince him that we're on his side. What? Yeah, sure. The only thing that'll make this John D. Morgan pack up and leave is more money. Well, of course. When he gets all he can out of the people. So listen to me, please. I want you to do two things. Now, I hear the press running back there. Yes, I started the run of today's paper just before you came. Stop the press. What? Yeah, set up a new front page. An apology for your previous attitude toward him. Apology? You know, now that you've seen with your own eyes what a good Samaritan good he really Samaritan. is, what he's done for these people, what he'll continue to do for them. Uh, Mr. Dollar, I and don't... Look, call in every kid in town if you have to, but get that paper in circulation. Then you call on Morgan. I Call on... Yeah, with every penny you can scrape up. Give it to him to invest for you. Yeah, I... Hey, is the local bank still open? It will be in a couple, for, uh, for a couple of hours, but now look here, Mr. Dollar. Then I'll try to get hold of some money myself to give to that crook. You? Well, Dollar, don't you see Do you what... think he'll hang around once he's got his hands on a real bundle? Hey, don't you understand, Mr. Lowry? Well? Why, yes, yes, of course. Sure. That's the only way to make him try to leave town with it. Yes, it's, it's a chance, though, Mr. Dollar. Have you got a better idea? While Mr. Lowry set up a new front page and got the paper back on the press, I went over to the city hall. Under protest, Chief Walters went through the old town records. And when he found no record of any Jodiah Morgan, he kind of changed his mind about John D. Then I spent item three, a buck and a half, for a call to the Securities and Exchange Commission in New York. They'd never even heard of our shyster friend. Chief Walter's protest then was because I wouldn't let him go straight to the hotel and slap the cuffs on John D. Morgan. And he is a crook. Lowry over at the Gazette was right. Well, sure, of course he was. But look, if you try to arrest Morgan now, you'll only make trouble for yourself. Until we get proof, that we have... bang that dirty crooked. What can I do, John? Well, I got a plan going, Chief. I'll tell you about it on the way to the bank. Oh, what kind of a plan? Did you phone Morgan I'd be over to invest with him? Yes, sir. Good. And when I said your name... Well, he made me repeat it for him. But I didn't tell him who you really are. I mean, what you do. Good. Now, you can help some more by taking everything you have out of the bank. Huh? Sure. To invest with John D. Morgan. What? Come on. I'll tell you what it's all about. At the bank, I laid the whole thing out to the president, a dignified old man by the name of Peterson. He, too, agreed to cooperate. Item four, then two and a quarter for a call to Pat McCracken back in Hartford. $10,000? Yeah, wire it to my account right here at this bank. Now, Pat, immediately. Then you're going to hand it over to that crook? That's right. Well, Johnny, if something goes wrong, if he gets it's away... It's a chance we got to take, Pat. Well? Okay, Johnny, whatever you say. boy. Now, Mr. Peterson. Mr. Dollar, my own wife has just gone to see Morgan with $5,000 for him. Oh? And if that doesn't, well, I guess flush him out is Yeah, concerned. good. And, and yet, I wonder. Yes. Well, I... I just hope we aren't overdoing this thing now. Enough to make him smell a rat, I mean. No, of course not, Johnny. Ain't you seen the Afternoon Gazette? Precisely. 
with the paper now supporting instead of fighting him, more people than ever have gone there to give him money. Yeah, but if he does get suspicious, I think I'd better go over there and see him. Whatever you say. But until Pat wires me that $10,000... Oh, here, Mr. Dollar. Here's a thousand in cash. Huh? From my own personal account. And if you need more... No, 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 thanks. But this ought to be enough to convince him I'm sold on him. Hope I'm not too late. Not unless he were to find out who you really are. Come on, Chief. Let's... Hey. Yes, Mr. Dollar? How does Morgan get around? Johnny, you mean you ain't seen that beautiful limousine, that brand new... Where does he keep it? He rents the garage back of Miss Goodwin's house on Wood Street, a couple of blocks west of the hotel. Okay, Chief, then I'll meet you at Morgan's hotel room. Okay, Johnny. And don't, don't, for heaven's sake, tip him off about this. I'll go along with the Chief. Yeah, do that. I found the Goodwin house on Wood Street. I found the garage in back. But there were no keys in the limousine inside of it. And rather than lose time breaking open the trunk, possibly to find nothing, well, I remembered an old trick I'd used once before. Then over to the hotel and up to the third floor. But instead of John D. Morgan, I found half the population of Enterprise milling around in it. I had to force my way through to where Chief Walters and the banker, Mr. Peterson, were standing in front of an old-fashioned open safe. Too late, Mr. Dollar. We got here too late. What? Don't you see, Johnny? He skipped. He's already skipped out on us. Must have got wise to you. I had the chief order Mr. Parker to open the safe and look. Look at what everybody who came in here thought were bundles of money. Their money and it's... Wads of paper with bills on the outside to make them look... Dollar, like... Dollar, listen to me. Yeah, Mr. Lowry. These people feel that you were responsible for this. Me? And after making me give my last penny to them a while ago, Dollar, I can't help wondering myself. Oh, now look, use your head. Listen to me, listen. All right, I'm listening. Well, doesn't anybody know where he went? He must have went out the window in the back room when he seen me and Mr. Peterson coming. The back window, huh? Okay. The very eagerness of that crowd to stop me was the only thing that let me get away and safely down the fire escape. But they jammed so tightly into that back room, into the window itself, that it was a long, precious second before the slow, clumsy old police chief could start down after me. I tore on over to the garage again. And there, sitting in the car, was John D. Morgan. One hand on the starter key, the other with a Colt 38 level at my head. You, huh? I might have known you'd done something to my car when I saw you leaving this garage for the hotel a few minutes ago, Dollar. Well, that's right, Morgan. I took the rotor off the distributor. Then put it back quickly or so help me, Dollar. Sorry, old man. It stays right here in my pocket. And you give me no choice. I'll have to kill you and take it away. All right, wait a minute, Morgan. Look out there on the street. Oh, those... Those, those people. Yeah, that's right. And I don't think they like you anymore. You see their faces? Not very pleasant looking, are they? Oh, no, no. No, let me... Oh, help me, help me. They, they'll kill me. Maybe. You had that money for him? But yes. Yes, it, it's in the trunk of this car, all of it. Then you'd better open it up and be ready to give it back to yes. them. Yes, yes, tell them I will. I'll, I'll give it all back, all of it. After you let me have that gun. What? Come on. I'd hate to think of what they might do if they saw you waving that thing around. Oh, here, here. Take it, please. Okay. Now get out and open up that trunk for him. mob slowly, menacingly moving in on us was something I won't forget for a long, long time. Matter of fact, it was Morgan tossing out the money, shrieking out a confession, promising to pay them all back that saved me from them. And now, of course, you'll be taken care of by the courts. Yeah, plenty. Expense account total less the $50 deposit on my rental car, $38.25. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the strangest disappearance I've ever been called on to investigate. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Forrest Lewis, Junius Matthews, Edgar Barrier, and Russell Thorson. 